Well, good morning, everybody. I'm glad you're here because this morning we're going to talk about some cool stuff. I have to warn you, the topic that we're addressing today is a topic that I generally take about two hours to get through when I'm talking about it. So you're going to be here. No, I'm actually going to get you out fast, but you have to write fast. So in your note sheet, get out uh, in your bulletin, get out that note sheet, get a pen ready. If you need a pen, I think we might have had them passed out already, but if you need a pen, nudge your neighbor. So get that ready, get ready to write down because we've got a lot of blanks that we're just going to kind of going to race through. The first half of it's a little slower, but the second half of it, we just got to kind of, uh, you know, power on through. I wanted to let you know we are in a series of talking about the big questions of life. For those of you who are with us for the first time, you're just visiting us, I want to thank you very much for coming. Later on when we take our offering, you can just put that communication card in the basket and let it go on past you. That's your gift to us. But I wanted to address this issue of just letting you, getting you up to speed on what we've been doing. We've been in a series where we're talking about big questions. And at the end of today's message, I'm going to open it up for live question and answer. But rather than having the awkwardness of someone running around the room with like a handheld microphone and stuff, we're going to take advantage of modern technology and you can text your questions to Jesus99. And if you put them there, it's going to go through the magical airwaves of Google, Internet, whatnot, and end up on my, my iPod right up here. And at the end of the service, I'll be able to answer your questions. I have a few lingering ones from last week, so if no one gets inspired with any questions, I still have some that I'm going to answer that I'm going to try to address. But you need to make your questions today more compelling than the ones from last week. So, you know, just you know, work really hard. You can also, we have Wi-Fi in this room, it's LCC, so if any of you have a Wi-Fi device and you want to do that, you can send email to questions at lafayettecc.org. So that's our series, and if you wouldn't mind, let's pray and ask for God to move in our hearts as we look at his word today. Heavenly Father, I do thank you for giving us your word and for trusting us with this book. I pray that today I would treat it properly and that we all would respond to it appropriately. I pray today that you would speak to our hearts by your spirit through these words and allow us to have a great and strong sense that you are in charge and that you have told us all about yourself. So God, I pray that you would answer our questions and that you would raise up some good ones, questions that impact us, not just you. And Father, I ask that you would guard the words I speak and the thoughts in our hearts and make everything holy and acceptable to you. For you are our rock, our redeemer, our savior, king, and we love you. We pray all this in Jesus' name, amen. So last week I addressed the single most common question that people ask me when I give them the opportunity to talk about spiritual questions and ask me spiritual questions. And it was basically the question of how do I know that God can be good and all powerful if there's evil in the world? How is that possible? How can God be good and powerful if there's still evil in the world? And what I did with that is I didn't directly answer that question. I kind of answered it a little bit, but I sort of skewed it because I recognized that that question has no real answer. I mean, you can come up with an answer that works for you now when you're not going through suffering, but when you are going through suffering, the pain is often greater than the reasons you had the last time you actually thought about that question. And quite often you begin to doubt. And so it's not so much whether or not you know the answer or if there is an answer, it's more that it's the wrong question. And what I identified last week is that the big questions of life are questions that don't just impact the person who's answering it, as if we're putting God on trial and how he answers will determine how we feel about him. No, a big question is a question that impacts me, the questioner, the asker. Because if the answer comes back in a certain way, I need to change. And so last week, the question that we actually addressed was, can I trust God? If there's evil in the world, can I trust God? If evil comes into my life, can I trust God? And what's that going to take? Well, today we're going to deal with the second most important question that people ask me. The second most often question, I will say, the, the most common question. And it basically is along the lines of this. Which religion is right? Or which spiritual authority is right? Or how do I know 
that God is who he is, or any of these kinds of questions. It's sort of like comparing the different religions in the world. Maybe sometimes even, how do I know the Bible is real? And, and really, all of these questions hover around the same big question. Because each one of these is touching on a specific issue. To make this plain, last week I addressed the issue of God and the problem of evil. But I addressed it by using the Bible. Next week we're going to be talking about the church. And I will address that by looking at the Bible. And the week after that we're going to talk about the issue of Jesus. Who was he really? And I'm going to look at that from the perspective of the Bible. What does the Bible have to teach? And so in other words, the Bible is sort of the thing that links all these things for us. And we have to at some point address whether or not the Bible is for real. And whether or not we can trust the Bible. And so anytime someone asks one of these questions about how do I know which religion is right or any of these kinds of things, it's really a question about authority. It's a question about what is the ultimate spiritual authority. And in some ways this should be obvious to us. Because if we're talking about questions, the only answers that we care about are answers that come with authority, right? I mean, I'm not going to ask my son if he knows anything about how the Large Hadron Collider in France works. I'm not going to ask him about how the economic situation of the United States should be solved because he has no authority over any of those kinds of things. Not that he isn't bright, he just doesn't know about United States economics, neither does anyone else. And so we've got this issue of if we're going to ask a question, we have to have an authority to which we go. And that, in many respects, is an even more important question to answer than the one we dealt with last week. Because last week it was, can I trust God? And all of us can trust God just so long as my idea of God is the one that I like. It's easy to trust the God of your own mind. It's hard to trust the God who comes from an authority outside of yourself. So here you go. The biggest of all big questions is this. What is my spiritual authority? What is my authority? Who is my authority? 